G'day, Tragic here, and welcome to Legend of Andor. We've already played Legend 1, and I've just installed Legend 2 into the mod. So let's unpack this sucker. Now, the mod does the basic setup for the game, but we still need to pick our heroes. Now, I'm going to only play with uh, four characters, but I'm going to randomly choose my characters from the... Uh, from the eight heroes available. The way I do that is I just roll a black die and a red die. Black is the number of, you know, like one to eight down this list of characters. And the red die is male or female. Uh, male for odd, odd for, male is odd. So that's a four, one. So that's one, two, three, four. Interesting, that one. And now let's do it one more time. Six, five. That's another male. Four, five, six. It's a water spirit. One, seven. That's another male. It's the dwarf. And one, we've already rolled a one. Seven, two, which is the mage. And there's our four heroes. Now, the reason why I've sort of marked them like that is because I've arranged these in rank order. So these guys, so this guy's rank seven. This dude here is rank 29. So when you're, when you're setting up your heroes, I like to have them in rank order. Just makes it a bit easier for me to organize. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a ranger. That could come and bite us in the behind. Now, this is one of the new heroes from the actual, uh, you know, expansion that has the, 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 the new heroes. I'll go through all their powers. This is also a new hero that needs to be explained. They're not too different. This guy is basically a water mage. So we've got two mages, which isn't very good. And then we have the classic mage and the only chick among our party. Stick these in the sunrise box. And I'm going to be playing with the flat tokens. Now I much prefer the flat tokens, but uh, I've, you know, you've got your choice of whatever tokens you want to use. Helps if I use the, the right token for the right person. <laughs> basically, I've built the game with standees, like, like that's a standee, but I've also got the flat ones. I just find the flat ones easy to use, so I will be using the flat ones, yo. And that just means I'm just going to click the set flat figurines as well, just so all the monsters are, are flat as well. Okay, so now that that's all done, I'll just clean up these boards to get a bit of memory back. And I'll go through the actual heroes that we've got. So we have the dwarf. Now the dwarf, I'll just zoom in, might be easier. The dwarf has an extremely powerful ability. When he's at the mine, he can buy strength points for one gold instead of two gold. That means this guy can strength up. He's like the ultimate fighter. You can get him very, very high. We want to get him to like 14 if we can. Meanwhile, we have Fen, who is one of the new guys. Now, he has all these extra items. Now, these can be used once a day, and I'll go through these at the point that I use them. Uh, there's a little rule book down here to help you. Basically, this allows you to peek at tokens, this allows you to re-roll a dice, and this allows you to roll maximum dice. Now, unfortunately, like we don't really have anyone that can maximize this. Basically, he works really well with the ranger. Okay, and this bloke is a bit weird. Basically, he has a second figure, this water spirit, and he can spend one hour of movement time to control, you know, mind control this water spirit. And it's basically a second figurine that can move around the board. It can't interact with anything. But any hero that is in the same space as the water spirit gets to roll the special white die instead of their standard die. It's basically like, it's basically like the, the black die. 
as in it's just a die you can roll that has much better values than a, a standard die. I think the lowest value on this is a four and the highest is a seven. And it's got like two sixes on it. It's a very strong die. So basically he just helps people roll by moving his water spirit around. Otherwise he just rolls a normal D six. And this is the mage who we've seen many times. Uh, basically you can rotate any result to the opposite face. Okay. So if you roll a two, you actually have rolled a five. And what's interesting about now, if you uh, are trying to figure out what is the opposite side, because you can't use flip in uh, tabletop simulator, a D six will always add up to seven. So a one plus a one means that the other side is a six. So uh, two, the other side is a five or whatever. Now what's interesting about her ability is it can work with any hero in her space not just herself. So she's very, very handy when you're fighting with people like the fighter or the dwarf. So there are heroes. And let's get straight into the legend, shall we? Long live the king, 1A. Okay, so it just has a little bit of a recap, which I will actually read because it's been about a year since my last video on this. <laughs> Before continuing with Legend 2, it's time to review. During his turn, a hero may perform one of the following three actions. Move, fight, or wait. Moving costs one hour per space moved. Fighting costs one hour per round of battle. And waiting costs one hour. Over the course of his turn, a hero may perform many other actions that do not advance his time marker. The free actions he may perform are empty a well, Use items, pick up gold or items in his space, drop gold or items in his space, trade gold or items with other heroes occupying his space, buy items or strength points at the merchant in his space. Heroes may perform any number of free actions before or after the current hero performs his standard action. Some items may be used during a standard action as described on the merchant inventory. In addition, heroes may drop gold or items while moving. However, a hero cannot perform free actions when his time marker is on the sunrise box of the time track. That is uh, this box here. So even if you are on space seven, you can still do free actions. So this is the, the, the merchant inventory. We're going to be utilizing some of these. Basically, the wine skin uh, just allows you to move an extra space without advancing the time track. The shield is pretty much just that, as in it prevents you from losing health during a battle. But its more important ability is actually the second ability, which is many uh, event cards will have a little shield in the corner. You can actually, you know, use the shield to discard that card. Now, you don't have to redraw the event, so you basically cancel the event, and the events can really hurt you in this. So that's a very strong thing. The Falcon is also very good. This allows you to basically send items, basically trade items with people who are not on your space. Very, very strong. The bow we might actually end up using. I, I don't usually buy the bow because I usually, because there's a number of, oh, I've already deleted the heroes. But there's a number of heroes that have the archery ability. So I usually don't get this. The helm is an interesting. This one allows you to add doubles. Now, it doesn't really work so well when you're playing with uh, without the, the warrior. Now, the telescope is also good. It allows you to reveal multiple tokens in, uh, like, all adjacent tokens to the hero. And the Witch's Brew is vital to the completion of a lot of quests. You can't buy the Witch's Brew at the Merchant. You need to actually buy it from the Witch. And it costs five gold in this game because we're playing four players. And basically, it allows you to double a, a result. So if you roll a six, you've actually rolled a 12, which is huge. But you've got to find a first. The Witch is usually somewhere in the, in the fog, which is what these grey tokens are. Oh, you know, also, we are playing a four-player game, so just uh, get rid of that. We have one shield to work with. 
uh, one of the end game conditions is if the castle gets overrun, you lose the game. So these shields act as sort of lives, I guess, you know, thematically what it means is that your garrison is absorbing the attack, but getting depleted. So if you, every time you have a shield, when a monster enters here, it can actually go on the shield and you don't lose the game. If you ever have a monster enter the castle and there's no shields left, we've only got one, then we lose the game. Now, the rest of that is just instructions on how to set up, except for placing the gores. You know, I should probably put the gores into the quest setup so you don't have to do this every time. A gore goes at 8, 20, 21, and 26, and 48. So 8 is up in the fog. 21, 20, 26, and 48, wasn't it? 48. 8, 20, 21, 26, 48. So 8, 20, 21, Yep, okay, so that's right. And we also put a scroll at 19. Yes, yeah, so I will definitely redo the mod so these are automatically added. Okay, and we place a farmer at token 24, which we've already done. Now, the farmers are basically peasants. They can be added to your garrison. You can conscript them. So when they, if you get them to the castle, they flip over the shield side and you can just place it up here and you gain extra shields and they're extra, extra garrison units to absorb attacks on the castle. But the thing about farmers is, is if there's, if they're ever in a location with a, with a monster, even if they're with a hero, they instantly get discarded. So they've got to be completely protected and, uh, you know, escorted back to the castle. Okay, I'll just leave this here. I'm just going to go through all the rules before I read out the flavor text. The legend objective is the heroes must retrieve the herb in order to heal the king. To find the herb, they must first find the witch. Only she knows where the herb is located. The witch is hidden, I mean, Andor's fog. And this is just telling us how to resolve the witch legend card. Basically, when you reveal the witch fog token, you just follow the witch card here. And finally, we just need to determine where the runestone card is located. So the runestone card is this one here. And it's a very annoying card that we have to deal with. It adds quite a lot of monsters to the board, so we want it higher up if possible. What I'd like to get is a 6 or a 4 or a 5. And basically, just roll the die. 2. Fantastic. So that means he's here at D. So what that says is, see how that's got the 2 there? And this is basically another event. So when we get to D, we now activate this card. The heroes begin with two strength points and the party receives five gold and two wineskins. So I'm going to give one wineskin to the dwarf. And I'm going to give the other wineskin to the mage. We have uh, very weak heroes. This isn't good. And I'm going to give all five gold to the dwarf. Dwarf goes and pays seven. Now, basically, this came out before the... This whole quest came out before they added the other heroes to the game. Now, there is rules for randomly placing the other heroes. But what I like to do is I just place heroes where they should be because I usually only play with four players. So we have the dwarf. Uh, Where's where, where it? Yeah, we have the dwarf and we have the wizard. So this says dwarf in seven, wizard in 34. So I'm going to put the wizard in 34. So that's the same as the actual instructions. And then we have to have the warrior in 14 and the archer in 25. So I'm going to say 
that this guy is the archer. And this guy is the war is the is the warrior. You know, this guy's sort of like a a scout, a ranger, so I'm gonna make him the archer. And I suppose I'll just say that the water spirit is the warrior. That's why she gets the, the nice the nice uh, die. Where's the warrior go? Fourteen. It's up here. Okay. So we're pretty much ready to rumble. I'll just read the flavor text now. Many farmers are requesting asylum within the walls of the Wrightsburg Castle, seeking refuge from the invaders. The heroes receives a message at dawn. King Brando's mind has become enfeebled, leaving him unfit to rule. Within the mountains, there grows a herb that will cure his condition. And that, my friends, is the setup. We are off on a mission. We've got to protect the castle, obviously. We've got to save the villagers. And more importantly, we have to find the herb, the magical herb up here, which will be somewhere on the board and get it to the castle to cure the king. So there's quite a lot to do in this game. Now, this game is notorious for being super difficult. And I have not rolled a particularly great selection of heroes. Not getting a ranger is a real blow, in my opinion. And none of my guys are really good at being rangers. Maybe this guy, he's only got two dice. So we've got two dice here. So basically everything's going to come down to cram our dwarf and maybe... Uh, Maybe the, the water spirit with Keelan. So this game, it looks like an RPG. It looks like a sort of exploration-y kind of Arkham horror -y, you know, kind of game. But it's actually a brutal efficiency game. The game punishes you for wasting time. It punishes you for even just indulging in combat. So you have to be very, very brutal with your decisions. And the real key to the game is working out which monsters to just let die or let attack the castle so we can let two monsters we can let one monster into the castle already so that's exactly what we're going to do because if we kill four monsters so every time you kill a monster you place it down in the little graveyard and it's got this little icon to remind you that the pawn moves one step further okay so as the pawn moves up we'll hit these event cards which just make everything worse and the the freaking rune stone is right at the start as well so we're going to be swamped with monsters and of course when we get to end that's game over so there's huge amounts of stuff to get into and i'm going to call that that is the introduction video and i will see you guys next time